r slash ask reddit what is the greatest completely legal loophole you know about suing telemarketers a lot of people don't know that telemarketers break a lot of laws because pretty much no one calls them out on it or threatens to sue here is a write-up someone did on it with sources i am being harassed by a company and this article was gold so gold for you i feel so special thanks hopefully they've called you a ton from what I've read it's $500 a call. One that is no longer in use, but I heard about it a long time ago, and thought it was genius. During the 1970s, a Bulgarian human rights dissident was expelled from his home country to West Germany. He figured out his own private way to get back at Soviet communism. Once a month, he chose a dissident imprisoned in the Soviet Union and wrote him a personal letter. But before mailing it, he would take it to the post office and have it insured against it being opened or tampered with. The Soviet government, naturally, would intercept the letter, open it and photocopy the contents. But because the letter was insured, they would have to pay the insurance award. If they didn't, they would be kicked out of the International Postal Union. The IPO let the Bulgarian dissident do this to a maximum of one time a month so as to not abuse the insurance system. So for years, this man would write a letter of support to an imprisoned human rights activist in the USSR, and one month later, he would receive a check from the USSR for a total of $400. Edit, thank you and a shout out to you slash PA2SK for tracking down the original story. My recall isn't perfect and I got a few of the details wrong. HTTPS colon slash slash www washington post com archive politics the 16th of december 1982 note to russia with love slash 65 b2 e 43 fa 191 dash 4 cb 293 dash 518 by 12 utm term equals 11 fa 5 e 1095 b just like he said andy kept writing those letters Andy Dufresne and crawled through a river of shit came clean out on the other side of that gulag. I got married to my college girlfriend so that she could claim in state residency and finish her degree at my university for like half the cost they would have charged her as an out of state student. I also looked like a very poor head of household on paper and received a shit ton of grant money towards my own degree. 10 out of 10 would wed again. Can confirm. After I got married I got way more financial aid. I'm expecting even more next year thanks to my son on the way. Be right back gonna go find her a girl and get married and have children. Here in Costa Rica it's quite hard for foreigners to get a work visa or residency. However, it's very easy to enter the country as a tourist. The only requirement for tourists is that they can't be here for more than 3 months. So, instead of going through the whole process of getting a work visa, at least 80% of the people I know here with foreign blood simply drive up to the Nicaraguan border and come back every 3 months allowing them to become what is known as a perpetual tourist. I know some people that have been exploiting that loophole, completely legally, for about a decade. Most countries, and I would be very surprised if Costa Rica was not one of them, attempt to close this loophole by limiting the number of tourist visas you can get in a certain period. Like for Turkey if I remember correctly it's no more than 90 days in 180 days, meaning if you got a 3 month visa, then left, you would have to wait another 3 months to get a new tourist visa. Also most places charge a good amount for tourist visas depending on where you're from so it's not perfectly foolproof even if you circumvent that rule. Most countries are not Costa Rica, which I believe still has the highest of US expats in the world. The practice is completely accepted and happens daily on a very large scale. I've been told you can get any doctor slash dental work you need done while on your Nicaraguan day trip too, as it's really cheap there. Farrand v. John Deere, a plaintiff that had a tractor accident in one state waited until after the statute of limitations had passed to go seek legal counsel. Most lawyers would have given up. Instead, this genius son of a beach filed the lawsuit in a different state that had more permissive statute of limitations laws, then filed a motion to transfer the case back to the plaintiff's home state for the convenience of the parties involved. Motion granted. In law school you quickly find out that great legal loopholes are a Hollywood fiction, for the most part, but this, this is the stuff of legend, and really clever lawyering, there's more to this story but I'm drunk and sleepy, source, am lawyer. 
you do still need some basis for jurisdiction in the more permissive state. You can't just pick one at random. In this case, suing a nationwide corporation took care of that. But it won't necessarily work on Bob Smith down the street. A drunk lawyer on a Monday night. You're hired. This cop told someone I knew that if someone broke into your house, you could kill them as opposed to injuring them to avoid an excessive force lawsuit. If they are dead, it's your word against his and he's dead and you're the victim. This doesn't work in states without a castle doctrine or states with a duty to retreat. They'll collect evidence as if it was a murder, such as where the body is, where the shots were taken, etc. New York is weird on this one, although straightforward from what I've gathered. Duty to retreat, unless it's your house and you aren't the aggressor. Basically, house defense is allowed as long as you don't instigate. You can break any law, as long as you are dead before they arrest you. Is it so that when the cop says you have the right to remain silent you'll look like an idiot? Stop resisting. You cannot arrest a husband and wife for the same crime. I have the worst ducking attorneys. Have you tried hiring a maritime lawyer? I used to work for a credit processor, which is the company that handles the network your credit transactions move across. Swipe your card at a merchant, it goes to the credit processor, who determines which financial institution the card belongs to and authorizes declines the charge through them, then reports back to the merchant. Anyway, one of our clients was a major bank, one you know. We were investigating a recurring network issue that we couldn't really pin down. Every month. This FI's network would strain and overload, around the same day time, once a month. We didn't have any errors log that weren't a result of the strain. No identifiable cause, no processes running at that time. They weren't doing maintenance, which was just a formality since the issue was on our network. So I'm idly watching transactions roll across the big screen when it starts flooding with the same line. We got hit with something around 35. 000 transactions all at once from the same source. Did some cross referencing and sure enough we could see the same thing had happened every time the problem occurred. And always the same account. So we called the FI and explained it to them. They looked into it. And here's what they shared with us. They'd had a promotion going on for their bank card to award 100 bonus points every time someone used their bank card to pay their bills online. No minimum to that. No qualifier that the bill had to be paid in its entirety. So this guy wrote a script to pay $350 by 1 cent transactions. And racked up bonus points on his bank card. So if you had that incentive and wonder why it went away. You can thank that guy. And me for nassing him out I guess. My friend did this with the Chase Freedom card. Opened multiple cards. Ran the script for single cent transactions and made out like a bandit before they caught on and closed his credit cards. Yay. We were all like damn. Well done. Selling nearly depleted fusion cores back to vendors for full price in Fallout 4. Morrowind had a single use one of these that was available at the beginning of the game. You buy the glass dagger in Saran for almost nothing. It has almost no durability left. Repair it next door. Then sell it for a huge profit. Of course. Morrowind also had expensive shit everywhere that you could just pick up from level 1. But this one was really easy. Ducking Savage. When your pawn has moved 3 spaces forward and your opponent moves one of their pawns 2 spaces forward so that it's next to your pawn under the assumption that this means you now can take it. You can move your pawn diagonally behind theirs as if it had only moved one space forward and take it despite not moving to where the pawn actually was. And passant. Indeed it's something I only learnt after assuming the computer was screwing with me and cheating. You can't do this anymore either. But when the US was trying to introduce the dollar coin, they were offering each coin for exactly one dollar. No tax. Free shipping. In an effort to get them into circulation, people were maxing out credit cards purchasing these coins for the frequent flyer miles, then turning around and depositing these coins back into their account, costing them nothing. I heard that some people got away with doing this many times. Racking up millions of frequent flyer miles before they had to end the $1 with free shipping program. My dad did that. We have so many $1 coins we leave them as tips sometimes in hotels and such because it's harder to spend them. But free miles. 
If you refuse to acknowledge a debt in the UK for 6 years it becomes unenforceable and is written off. Sounds like a law that has not been revised for modern times. In the meantime, I'd like to take out a 6 year loan with a deferred payment plan please. The law is similar in most US states, though the number of years varies, sometimes less than 6 years. Thing is, the 6 years only start from default, i.e. payment was due and you failed to pay. According to a law professor there's a 50 square mile area in Idaho where you can get away with rape and murder. Uh, why the duck anyone would go there is beyond me. I would go there. The likelihood of you getting raped or murdered there is minuscule. Plus think of all the great pictures you could take. There are laws to protect you there. For instance, a rapist and a murderer can't take you there and get away with the crime. They'll get caught and prosecuted in their jurisdiction. The only thing you need to worry about in that area is that some random guy who's lived there his entire life without outside influence who just likes to randomly rape and murder people who come around his area. I think the odds of that happening are very, very small. This is on a much smaller scale than most things presented here, but I'm proud of it. My senior year in high school in Texas. 2002 to 2003, my friends and I found out that if you have too many absences you had to make up for it during Saturday school. Well it turns out that Saturday school is only half a day and it makes up for 3 absences. So me and 3 other friends would constantly skip school. We didn't do sports so we had all our credits anyway well before end of the year. And then on Friday nights have a LAN party and play Warcraft 3 or Star Wars Galaxies all night. The next morning tired as hell we drive to Saturday school and just kinda sit and stare doze off for about 4 hours and have our absences erased. Wish my school was like this. But no, we can only take one science and math class a year and you need 4 credits for both science and math. I used to work for a non-profit school that was funded by the state. There was a regulation that the school had to disclose how much the executives were paid. But there was no regulation against outsourcing executive functions. And there was no regulation against outsourcing to a for-profit company that didn't have to disclose anything. And there was no regulation against outsourcing to a for-profit that the executives owned. This sounds like fraud. I'm an auditor fraud investigator. And this sounds like fraud. Edit. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely legalized fraud. I have an English degree and this sounds like English. Criminal barrister here. A couple of my favorites. Young man arrested on possession charge after a vehicle search. He admits possession of cannabis and gives his reply to caution. Which is recorded in the officer's notebook as. Don't strip search me. The case is an anticipated guilty plea. But at the first appearance his instructions are that the officer threatened to strip search him if he didn't admit the drugs were his. Takes it to trial on this issue. Officer denies ever mentioning strip searching the defendant. At trial the officer is questioned as to why the reply to caution was don't strip search me if the officer had never mentioned a strip sark. Pretty clever to set that up in my opinion. I do a lot of road traffic work as well and some of the points taken are quite entertaining. Such as putting the prosecution to strict proof in respect of the speed limit for a particular road, and insisting upon a strict interpretation of what evidence would be permissible to that end. What is a reply to caution? Is it required that the officer record this? In England and Wales when anybody arrests someone else they are supposed to be cautioned. Where they are told that they are under arrest. That they don't have to say anything. That anything they do say can be recorded and used against them. And it might harm their defense if they don't say something which they want to rely on later. It's similar to having your Miranda rights given to you. An officer is supposed to note. At the time any response which the arrested person gives to that caution. Or note no reply in their notebook. If a comment is made. This is generally offered to the arrested person for signature to avoid disputes about what was or wasn't said later on. Pretty small thing. But it's one I use really often. Stop signs in parking lots aren't legally enforceable. They're on private property and out of police jurisdiction. So the next time you're leaving Walmart at 3am feel free to roll through that annoying stop sign in the middle of the empty parking lot with no possible repercussions. You rebel. Edit. Looks like these signs aren't usually enforceable. Certain states may have adopted laws to allow ticketing for private property infractions. Check your local laws before becoming a 3am Walmart rebel. 
I actually have an add-on to this, and it happened to me 4 years ago. I was at a private park, and one of the exits had a stop sign that I happened to roll through. A week later I receive a citation that looked official as all jet out. It gave me a HTML which showed a video of a very obvious me very obviously rolling through. It was for $100, and I was absurdly broke at the time. So I called the city to ask for an extension to pay. They said the citation number is not on their books, and they have no way to enforce it. So I said what happens if I don't pay this? They said nothing at all. Perfect. Open bracket. It was Temescal Canyon in the Palisades of LA. Call yourself a church. Great now you are tax exempt. I am church. I declare you. Tax exempt. Throw away for obvious reasons he have earned over $90.000 by getting compensated by airlines. This is a simple trick that works well. If you know certain routes at your airport are always oversold, just buy a fully refundable fare a few days before the flight takes off. Usually this will be one or more of the oversold tickets. Just go to the airport and offer to give up your seat and reap the rewards. If not needed, just refund your ticket. Usually I book 12-18 tickets in one day and hit one after another up until my planned departure in the evening. I try to spread it across 5 plus airlines to avoid seeing the same staff. I fly for free everywhere in the world. Southwest has the best policy. Usually $300 plus twice the value of your ticket. I have thousands of dollars of credit with all the airlines that I can't even use it fast enough. I feel like you have more of these tricks. Yeah as a matter of fact I do. I'll expand a little bit more on how to do this first trick. The easiest way to find if a flight is sold out. One trick I use is with Southwest Airlines. For example, if you look at Atlanta to Houston tomorrow most of the cheaper one of getaway fares are sold out. This usually means the flight is almost fully booked. Southwest is notorious for overbook 2-4 seats on every flight, so now would be a great time to get a business select or any time fare. These fares are fully refundable, so no harm is done because the refund goes back to your card if you don't get the compensation. Just make sure you get to the gate as soon as they open and graciously offer to volunteer your seat. If they don't call on you, just cancel at least 10 minutes before departure. If you really want to be crafty, you can do this while you are at the airport. Oftentimes airlines will sell overbooked seats up until about 50 minutes before departure. So find a flight on American or United that is fully booked but has a fully refundable first class ticket available for an insane amount like $1.200. Buy that fare. Check in right away online. Then go straight to the gate and make up a stupid story and offer up your seat. If the flight is oversold and overbooked, more people checked in than there are seats. Then you're in prime territory. Usually they only offer $300 400 in voucher money. But it's good enough. PM me if you want details on other tricks. I literally have not paid for a single flight, hotel or rental car in 6 years. In Denver, the city places about 10 photo radar vans at various locations around the city. If you are speeding, the radar van snaps multiple pictures of the driver, the car, and the license plate. A few weeks later, a ticket arrives in the mail with the pictures and a $40 fine, $80 if in a work zone. However, there is a beautiful little clause at the bottom of the ticket that says, if you are not the person pictured in the violation notice, you may sign and mail in the not pictured driver affidavit located on the back of your notice of violation or penalty assessment notice. You must submit a legible, clear photocopy of your driver's license with the not pictured driver affidavit. The affidavit and supporting documentation will be reviewed by a Denver Police Department employee and a determination will be made regarding the identity of the actual driver. If further information is required, you may be contacted by the photo enforcement unit. If it is determined that you are not the driver, the case against you will be dismissed. Open bracket. Source. My parents figured out this loophole years ago, and have had their cars registered to each other for many years for the sole reason of getting out of photo radar van speeding tickets. I had one of these is Boulder, Colorado but the ticket said if this is not you, you still owe unless you can identity and or elect a driver of your choice that you knew was driving your car at the time. Basically, if you say it's not you, you have to tell the state who it was and they have to pay or you still have to pay. This one is because of my roommates, 
They would raid a pizza hut nearby us and get a free pizza. Go down. Get the pizza. Rate the Pizza Hut and get a free pizza. Basically they never had to pay for a pizza from Pizza Hut. However because they aren't a-holes they would also buy other stuff. Drinks, desserts or garlic bread. Probably why they allowed it tbh. If you tell them it's for a bird, you get free bread at Subway. Edit. There's two types of people in this world. Those that know Mitch Hedbeck, and then those that need to hurry up and discover him. There are six ducks outside and they all want sun chips. Ducks eat for free at Subway. Jury nullification. Relevant. HTTPS colon slash slash. Yautu. BUQHY12 poke warning. Simply watching may prevent you from ever serving on a jury. Warning. Simply watching may prevent you from ever serving on a jury. Oh no. UK heard that technically you don't need planning permission for stuff you build on your own land. If nobody objects within 4 years of you building it, someone stacked hay bales ridiculously high, shielding his property from view, then built a ducking castle behind it. Nobody could object to him building it because no one knew about it. 4 years after he finished he took the hay down and nobody can take his castle away. They're still trying to though. Getting demolished. Or, the ducking sucks. I bought a historic office building, that used to be a school using a residential home loan. Many years ago, this worked because the zoning was, ah, residential. I put very little money down, had low payments, and kept the whole transaction simple. Bought it for $400,000 sold it for $800,000, and legally used it for my office for 4 years. Do you need to put less down for historic buildings or something? I don't understand. Sex for money is illegal. But sex for money in front of a camera is porn. TBH that's not true. You actually need a permit and proof you are a legit porn company to pay someone to have sex in front of a camera. What if you buy a peanut off them for a few hundred dollars? Then they have sex with you as a human with free will? If anyone wants to find the actual article, I believe there was a man in Texas, assume homeless or poor, who got a nice 3-4 bedroom home for a whole $35, when the previous owners left their suburb home, I assume a lack of payment, he paid the fee to have the home transferred to him, I believe the only stipulation was to stay 3 years and it becomes his, no mortgage, no rent. Just a $35 piece of paper. Neighborhood was pretty pissed. I applaud the man for his craftiness. Want a handgun but aren't 21? Private gun sales in a lot of states are 18 and older including handguns. That's how I got mine and it's totally legal in my state. Given that you're not a felon obviously. Want to buy handgun ammo but are under 21? Tell them you have a rifle model, chambered in that caliber and viola. You can purchase your rifle ammo. There is no burden of proof that you actually have the rifle. This can actually be a considered a felony. Lying about intent is strictly against the law. Yeah there would be no way of knowing but it's still technically illegal. If you're a white swimmer that goes to Stanford. But only for like 20 minutes. Doesn't apply outside of Scotland. But corroboration is pretty neat. It means at least two different and independent sources of evidence are required in support of each crucial fact before a defendant can be convicted of a crime. Strictly speaking, it applied not some place in the Netherlands for a while while they were sorting out the Lockerbie bombing trials. Adoption Ray Homing. Apparently it is legal to give away an adopted child to new parents. Ro. That's so Don Gentian. My English lit boner is so hard right now. Right to repair. Void the warranty because you broke open your Xbox to find the part you need is a pain in the ass. Send it to Microsoft. They still have to fix it even though the warranty states that it is void if opened but if you opened with intent of repair they have to fix it. Your good luck with that one. In most of the world children are actually allowed to smoke cigarettes. They aren't allowed to buy them though. Similar rule with alcohol. Funny you should mention this, in my state of Oregon, it's completely legal for a parent to provide tobacco, i, e, cigarettes, to their minor child to smoke as long as they do it in their home. Which explained so much about some of the specific kinds of trashy that arise in Oregon. From here, it is also illegal for a minor to possess tobacco products, except inside a private residence with the consent of the minor's parent or guardian. Whoa. 
you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.